of Zest also. But, you know, it's also smart as uh, that, yeah, that was Zest's map. Why not just cheese him? Yeah. Just like, I don't care what you wanted to do on that map. But anyways, let's go to my map. I won game number one. That means I pick map number three. He picks a big map, which is much more difficult for timing attacks to hit on. And uh, I think he's just going to play macro again, use that tempo-based pressure that we saw him use in game number one. And uh, could have a good chance of taking this and going right to the winner's match. Yeah. I mean, with how well he played in game one, wouldn't be surprised. I thought Zest had a bit of an edge in game one, too. Yeah. Uh, the early game, but yeah, by the end game. I, I, that, you just showed what a strong Terran player he was. He was able to engage... Uh, you know, uh, kite the units properly, get the EMPs down. Really good Widowmine placements, and also his macro was impeccable. I think that's really what won him the game. He just had too many Marauders yeah. at all times. And it was also to keep that uh, Immortal Colossus number down, too. Now on to game number three here. Just look at this, man, against Mario. Uh, his cheese didn't work that last game. Let's see what he does this time around here on the map, Frost. Two thousand fourteen, Hot Six, GSL, Season One, Round Sixteen, Zest versus Maru. Zest always looks pissed, by the way. Like he's these like laser beams coming out of his eyes. Whenever he does an interview, that's like the only time he might smile, but he like yeah. tries not to. <laughs> he's never gonna smile until he wins like three GSLs in a row. Yeah, cross spots, by the way. Yeah. This is probably what Maru wants. It's his map pick. And uh, if he just plays a longer, drawn-out macro game, especially if he's able to get that pressure tempo going like we saw in game one, seems to be going well for him. Maru like, just seems to handle all-ins by process so well, unless it's DTs. <laughs> uh, you know, oh, yeah, the DTs have been uh, fairly effective against him. You know, Blink Stalker type play, Oracle play, none of that really gets under Maru's skin. It's the, you know, it's just like his strength it almost feels like to deflect these and we're gonna have nexus first against cc first here hell no we're not we'll just late gateway at 15. very late gateway um uh cc is now being made for Maru. so we might have a little bit of downtime here yeah for sure um, until they uh, get their tech route set up especially the terran here yeah a lot of people here in the studio today. Yeah, coming down to see uh, an excellent group. It's those three guys. We saw them earlier. I saw them again. Yeah. Deja vu. It's a glitch in the Matrix. Well, basically what uh, Zest does with this is he gets uh, his gateway up fast enough to where he can get tech out pretty soon, but he still gets a faster Nexus and then gets his gases later. Yeah, it's smart. He doesn't need... Because um, there is a high chance uh, Terran goes quick command center on this map. So... Um, you know, I, I, it looks to me like what he wants is, yeah, as you said, get the tech up. Uh, he could scout the other player and then figure out, okay, let's say he doesn't go uh, command center first. Well, then I can get the defense I need up. Otherwise, I, I could try to figure out what kind of fast expand this is going to be and try to counter it. Yeah, it's just gate, nexus, and then core. And the timer works out pretty well for that. Starts his second gas now. And uh, unfortunately for Maru and for Zest, they both scout in correct location first. Pretty normal on a four-player map. Nobody really scouts uh, cross first. That would be weird. Yeah. <clears throat> that uh, There was a period in StarCraft 1 uh, that some people were scouting cross. And actually, I, I think in some cases, StarCraft 2, you can scout cross, but you have to have a very specific build that you can only use against cross spots. Yeah. Uh, also, there's a little a hump in the middle of this map, uh, which kind of makes it less appealing, even though you're losing just a few seconds. Yeah, it's not like on like a Tall Dream where you can just go directly through the middle or something. Yeah. This probe is actually getting some harassment done. He should escape as well. And Mario goes right into factory behind this. So, uh, gonna be putting on some factory harassment ASAP. Stalker about to pop out now. Uh, he probably won't start any tech route until uh, he gets rid of that SCV. So we can keep it hidden. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, really curious to see what Mario's gonna do with the factory. At cross spawns, it takes a long time to drop. It also takes a long time to run Hellions across the map, but uh, you know if he just gets a faster tech out, can definitely throw Zest off guard. I don't know if the probe actually came in the main base and saw the factory, or I don't think so. No, 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 he didn't. Because he was just harassing the SCV instead after he saw the CC first. Yeah, the Marine got down the ramp, yeah. um, drove him out. So, uh, so uh, we got the robotics facility now. Now we're getting to see what the Protoss is actually going to do here. And the starport here, the starport very standard in this case. Um, here for Maru. 
Uh, he might go for some of his drop play. Mario's got some very good harass. Yeah, We've he does. seen him win a lot of uh, even code S games off of two base um, versus two base, I mean. Yeah. Which I always thought really wouldn't work the longer the Starcraft 2's around, but uh, he, he does make it work. We'll see if he does it here in uh, distances this far. Sometimes his control is really just what wins him games. His splits with his Marauders against Colossi uh, can be a game changer, also against Storm. Um, in this case, it looks like he's going to drop a Widow Mine with some Marines with that first medevac that's coming out. This is one of the older builds here for Morrow. Yeah. Uh, that he's used very well. Very, very Prime esque. Um, you know, a lot of those Terran, old Terrans. Um, yeah. I'm very. Especially like, uh, you know, Marine King and, and uh, Maru. I mean, not Maru. Well, Maru is a you know prime, but uh, a foreign prime player. I meant to say Maka. You know, just like one of those players who would just do these weird, weird kind of drop Maka plays. Maka, the reason why they nerfed the Reaper. Remember that? <laughs> yeah. Terrans are like, these poor Zergs that are like roaches were getting kited by like endless like fleets of Reapers. That was a funny time in StarCraft 2. It was. But go ahead and kill these rocks just to make sure you can put more buildings down. A good scan timing here. Let's see what he sees. He sees the forge. Does not see the robotics on the other hand, so he doesn't know that detection's out. Oh, is oh, he just going to make those in the scan? I don't know if that was actually in there. I, I believe you had to at least have seen the robotics facility. I think on. you're right. Still, though, uh, no, because there was a little outline of the scan there. Yeah. Um, it, don't, it doesn't mean that the, um, you know, for sure that Maru saw it, but normally we see people be a little bit safer about that. Uh, now the medevac is coming around. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean he will necessarily dive right into the second. It's possible he'll just wait for the Protoss to try to leave his base and then go in there. He actually decided to keep the Widow Mine at home as well. It's not in his medevac. It's just pure Marine in there. Yep. Drops one of these Marines out here to check for spotter pylons, it looks like, and then he's going to send the drop around. That's pretty smart. That's smart. A lot of uh, Protosses have spotter pylons here. I, guess I think that's what this is for. It looks like he might just also be checking the third base. He sends the medevac looking like back towards home right now. Well, it's cheaper than using a scan, right? Yeah. Definitely true. Warp gate now coming in. And he's he's uh, getting his Colossus tech out. Don't think he's going to stick with that for too long. We'll probably switch. This is a great scout here by Zest. He's the third base timing exactly. Starts to fan out his observers now that he realizes no fast Widowmine drops are coming. He has four OBS on the map right now, so he's going to have so much vision. And I mean, that of course delays any other robotics time, but the way it lines up, it's pretty good for him. And he's and not cutting probes out this time, you know, he's playing more economically focused. I love the observer spread here. It's so good. I mean, Zess is really going for, like, late game here. He wants to have a game where he's got this death ball that you just cannot touch. He will not harass him. He will not be punished in any way. Uh, and I like that. I mean, that's three observers that did delay Immortal and Colossi production by a lot. Uh, now, in this case, Mara was uh, just as cautious as Zest was, and it wasn't even actually blindly dropping in any locations. Because um, if he was, he'd be punished. Uh, and as you can see here, the, the observer spread there, uh, even dropping Marines outside of, you know, kind of the drop area here, outside of the bases, is not going to be effective with all these observers. He uh, knew that was there, too. That's why he yeah. picked up, and he was even able to scan and kill it. Well, he Look knew a stalker saw that SCV somehow, and it was a, a suspicious number of stalkers, just two, not one, you know. Yeah. Look at uh, this army supply here from Mario's up about 10, but the more time goes by, the better the, the chances of Zest holding this pressure are. There's a siege tank in this army, even tasteless. This is a pretty crazy push. What's going on here? It's designed to punish this third base because yeah. you can have so much range units on the high ground here where you can start to pick away at those probes. And note, he's not in range of the Nexus, which is interesting. He's just a, He can get in range with his Marines here where the probes will be mining. Yeah. You'd have to move them up slightly, but... It's Colossi, I gotta be careful with that Widow Mine. It does carefully target it down. The Siege Tank makes it so much more difficult to use the Colossus tech here. He's gonna actually target those Marines now with his Colossus to pull the weekend one this back. This is really something that can highlight the uh, power of the Nexus Cannon. Did you see that? Oh! Wow. Did you see the uh, Nexus Cannon actually hitting some of that uh, Marine army? I mean, it's just such incredible range. It's insane. Now, I have to say, I think Mario's gonna be a little bit behind from that attack. In fact, I was a bit confused because I was pretty sure when I saw that get set up there that there's no way uh, that that would ever actually, you know, deny that expansion from being used for a long period of time. If it got set up unscouted with like a bunker up there or something, you know, where there was no observer and then he started attacking, it would be much more difficult then, to break. I think even then, man, I mean, that's not a location you can reinforce very easily. That's yeah, and we very don't... far away to walk to. I mean, Protoss, okay, yeah, you're, you're, you might stop them from mining some minerals, but uh, they are at least, uh, I don't know, man, I mean, it just seemed like a, a, 
a weaker attack, right? That seems almost like one of those older StarCraft 1 attacks, you know? Yeah. Or StarCraft 2 attacks even, where it's like, well, you know, it's the game's still new. Uh, if you don't know how to deal with the siege tanks and this army in this funny spot, you yeah. should lose. But, I mean, come on, he's just going to make enough units to probably take that out. Or he could re -incept, or, uh, intercept reinforcements, excuse me, and then just take that out. So, so many Marines in the army, too, made it pretty easy for the Colossi to deflect that. And, uh... And he had vision of it the whole time. He knew with his observer this was coming. So, just these little things. Looks like he's going to send a group of drops into the main base here while setting up another attack over here to the right. So he's going to try to kill probes on the high ground. But again, Zest has vision. He splits his units over to the left side. And he has enough units in the natural, most likely, to hold here. Okay, the class are going to come up here and uh, push out this army. Now, he's trying to get the Protoss out of position. I don't know if it's going to be effective here with Zest. Zest seems to be so focused on not getting put out of position with all the observers yet around. Uh, although, I guess we just did see him lose one, but there's actually plenty more uh, out on the map here. Maru is just trying to find a hole in Zest's play right now, but there, it just doesn't seem like there is one. He seems pretty bulletproof with all these observers yeah. on the map. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's, he's picking uh, fights of the Colossi uh, at bottom, then at top. He'll probably go back down to the bottom again. But he's killing probes over there at the third base, actually, meanwhile. But I think it was only Stalkers at the third. Nope, some Zelts are warped in there. Yeah, and you know, this, this is why uh, drop harass is really a double-edged sword because um, you can do some damage and then pick up and get out for free, or you can end up losing what's in the in the medevac. You know, all those units there as well, and uh, you know you're just behind, and that's a lot of gates, man. Yeah, he has it looks like 12 gateways here that are just highlighted by our observer. That's so many. That's so many reinforcements that he can make at any point in time. Almost like to see him just get a, a warp prism now, since he's not really producing any more colossi and just uh, start harassing the third base of Maru. Maru's actually kept his worker count pretty high again, all the way up to 65 here, and even has a fourth command center completing right now, as well as his Ghost Academy, which is going to be very important for dealing with those uh, very pesky High Templar. And he's going to try to, looks like, do a two-pronged attack here over at the third base, and a huge group of drops, maybe going to the natural. Uh, now I really am starting to question the efficacy of the drops. Yeah, I think uh, this time uh, is uh, over, right? Well, I mean, here's the thing is that he's getting bigger and bigger armies, right? But uh, the Protoss is, is, is matching him in supply. So I don't think that it's, especially with the main, not that easy to drop into. You're basically either going through the third or through the second. I guess you could try to go in between them, but you're probably going to get caught in the trap between the second and the third, which is constant, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if any of these drops can really get the Protoss off guard. Well, he's just, like, never doing damage anymore with these. He's trying to kite a little bit. There's still a rogue group of three medevacs over here to the right side. Well, there's defense set up for that, too. And I think Zest may even blink forward under these and, and commit to that attack. He has another observer going over to spot that oh, army man, on the right he's side. He's got some uh, medevacs back there, too, with those stalkers. He's just got so much vision of every angle that Maru could attack. And he's he's ready over here with some high templars, so he should be able to storm this by time, and then when the army gets back, he's just gonna kill it. Nice storms here, wrecking that army. Now Protoss just chasing the Terran up here. You know, it seems like when you get a Protoss death ball like this and somebody like Zest in control, uh, it seems like there's not a ton that Terran can do against it directly, though. Yeah. Now let's keep in mind it's cross spots. This is a very big map. Um, Let's say Protoss tries to move out. You know, let's say they get about halfway across the map. Then maybe a big drop somewhere could be effective. Yeah. Because uh, uh, the, the Protoss uh, dead ball, it's not that mobile. I mean, it, stalkers are, are quick, but the stalkers really need backup. Um, All right, it's this type of mobility that we just saw there. The probe is sniped by a small group of units that have a medevac that can easily retreat them any moment. He's even going to try to kill a Templar here. Doesn't get it. Um, but he denies the Nexus, and that means this Nexus is again delayed. He has his own fourth base up, and Zest is never able to cross the map. Yeah, that's that's the real issue here. Is the, the entire game has been sent with uh, spent with pressure from the Protoss. So, hmm. well, he he's you know, he's got a fourth base. What Maru would like to do is build a better army, but his army is it's pretty solid as it is. I mean, he has Vikings in the air to help deal with the Colossi, but he needs a little bit more of those, I would say, because there's five Colossus still. He has nine ghosts, only a few High Templar on the map. Okay, and this, this is going to be annoying. Yeah, this is this is where Protoss gets to be very annoying. And Look at this. I mean, oh, God. my God. Oh, my heavens to Betsy, Wolf. How many zealots do you think that is? That's that like is 10 to 15 zealots, maybe no, more than that. That's like all of his zealots. <laughs> that does not count as a small gathering anymore. No, right? it does not. But he's way out of position with all those zealots. So this army oh is getting crushed God. right now by Maru. He's got so many Vikings over here as well. Now to I would those say Colossi. that the Colossi would have done a lot better against that, but they were out of position. 
Meanwhile, the Zealots are tearing in here and taking out the Planetary Fortress. The Terran's not done yet. He's going to continue to move over here uh, and try to push into the second now. The third should be canceled. There's a few Marines remaining there. The Viking uh, number compared to the Stalker number is just too tremendous, so the Colossi will uh, be picked off here. Nexus Cannon activated. Will Terran turn around and hit elsewhere? Will he push forward? More so it's though. Terran through into the Terran second now. Yeah, he's just got so many gateways to reinforce off of. The probes coming off the line here as well. EMP hits those Marauders, or rather those Immortals there, trying to take out the Marauders. He's just got so much healing power here. I think that Marauders should actually push through and eventually deal with those Zealots at home with reinforcements. I think Maro just barely, barely wins this. Let's see how the... the uh, uh, Templars can do anything. Okay, now those are some nice feedbacks there and warping into DT to take care of the rest. Yeah, DTs are know. great in, in moments where there's just too much to going on to follow, you know? Yeah, I don't think he even realized that DTs were killing some of his army there. Uh, so let's take a look at some numbers right now. He's still up in probes, 31 to 25. Army supply is triple for Maru than it is for Zest, but Maru is down in upgrades slightly. Actually, they're about even. If you look at the shields, you can you know, argue otherwise, and plus three armor just finished. Uh, so. Pretty, pretty even in upgrades, but slightly disessed. And he's got the better tech units. He just needs a little bit more time to make more zealots, and I don't think Maru's going to give it to him. Okay, let's see if this DT does a lot of damage here, because uh, if uh, he can actually hold on and... Okay, now Maru's identified that the DT's there. That's the first step. Pulling yeah. the SCVs out. And there's just so many Vikings uh, in the area. It's going to be hard for these archons, archons to cover these uh, Vikings. It's, it's not, not an easy uh, thing to do. Yeah, definitely not. Not enough energy here for Storms. The Archons now can be kited. He's got four Archons can here. Can pull through? Possibly. It looks like he it's very well made. It's neck neck. Archons being warped in. Stalkers as well. No, Templars, excuse me. There's not enough. Uh, there's not enough minerals here. He needs. He needs more minerals to make more zealots. I he just doesn't have just it. Just barely. Uh, Maro is going to be going to the winners match. Looks like it, man. The zealots here pushing forward, but it's not enough. And this is it. GG. Terran. Ah! <laughs> this is a pretty big upset, I would say, and and a great series by Maru. Very well played. He controlled yeah, the map really the entire done. time. And I feel like saying that huge zealot force across the map was what caused, caused Zest the game in the end. Uh, yeah, I have to agree. You it, can't kill a okay. Terran with only For zealots. Well, I mean, you can if there are zealots back at home to defend. But the fact that he had, uh, I, what was that like? I was like 20 zealots or yeah. something? He didn't Probably. have any zealots at home. Yeah, exactly. You, you can, if you're just harassing the Terran, you can kill him with zealots. What you need, something there. The only unit that sponges up damage effectively for Protoss is the Zealot. Yeah. Yes, there are some tanks. units that have more, more hit points. Yeah, they're the tanks. Um, so he had too many Zealots that went up there. And, okay, look, it was it was something that was very difficult for Maro to deal with. But eventually, because it's only Zealots, uh, I mean, Zealots are, are only good because they can catch the Terran off guard. They're, they're mineral only, so fundamentally they're cheap when it comes to economics. Yeah. They, can, uh, they can take out... Um, they could, they'll pay for themselves when they go in there to harass, basically. Yeah. Uh, but he had no zealots at home, so he couldn't defend that. So even though uh, Maru uh, did get his army pushed to a very small amount and didn't have uh, reinforcements, didn't matter. He had something there, and when everything was wiped out for the Protoss, that army did the damage that was necessary to uh, win him the game. Yeah, he just broke through because there were no tanks. He got on top of those Colossi, and he got on top of those High Templar, just ran through the storms, and eventually with reinforcements, a good kiting, good micro the wall he had, he was yeah. able to deal with the zealots at home. All right, guys, we're going to take a short little break. When we come back, we're going to go on to our second best of three here at the GSL Codes.